Hi to anyone who is watching our recording for our final presentation. My name is Luo Puzhang, also good by Edward. I'm presenting our final project, Dynamic Programming for Optimized Stock Investment for my team. So to briefly go over our presentation structure, I'll be talking about the introduction and members' motivation. Uh, problem solutions, um, demo, and the conclusion, I will leave the rest to my teammates. So let's get started. To start, I think the legend of Justin Livermore, who made a great fortune in the stocks market during the Great Depression in the 30s, is a cool story that made stocks trading mysterious and exciting. However, as traders become more rational, we are seeking ways to analyze the stocks data to generate a good strategy. Although real-life stock market is extremely difficult and almost impossible to predict, we want to find a way to apply the algorithms we learned in the courses to help us better, better understand stocks trading. So with this in consideration, we want to explore our interest in stocks market, market and hence we came up with this project idea. However, since there are too many indicators and the parameters to measure a stock, we want to simplify the context for our project to better apply our algorithms. So the questions we want to answer here is really simple. Given any amount of investment budget, which stock should we invest in to have best performance? So here are two limitations for our question. So first, how to measure performance? We use the past three months rate of return as a measure for the stock's performance. Second, all the buyers are limited to only buy one shares of a stock. So um, that's the context for our question. Um, so far, team members' motivation. Um, Chao Yi is a CS major student who is interested in applying algorithms in real life challenges. Zhen Yu and Zichi are very interested in stocks market and want to learn stocks trading from a different perspectives using algorithms. And myself, I have been trading stocks for a few years and I wanted to compare the performance of different trading strategies. Uh, like I want to compare how trading use algorithms um, performance with my trading algorithm, uh, my, my trading's performance. So that's the context for our project and I will give the time to the rest of my team. Hi, I'm Chao Yi, and I'm going to continue with the problem and solution part. Here is our problem. With an investment budget of N dollars, where we can select any number of different stocks, limited to one share per stock, what strategy would optimize our portfolio for the highest expected three months return? given we have access to historical three months return rates for every available stock. Further, if presented with the option to invest a dollar amount anywhere between zero and N, what would constitute the most cost-efficient amount to invest? To find a suitable solution for our investment problem, we framed it as a variant of a well-known computational problem, the knapsack problem. We know that the knapsack problem deals with finding the most valuable combination of items given a weight capacity limit. It represents a scenario where you are given a set of items, each with a specific weight and value. This problem is known for its combinatorial complexity and it is typically solved using dynamic programming. As we know that dynamic programming provides a method for solving complex problems by breaking them down into simpler overlapping subproblems. By using dynamic programming, we can transform our investment problem to match the structure of the knapsack problem. In our case, the items are different stocks available for investment. Each item or stock carries a weight, which corresponds to the price of the stock. The value of each item, in our case, relates to the expected return from each stock. Lastly, 
The total weight capacity of the knapsack is analogous to our total investment budget N. With this model in mind, we came up with our solution. Our goal is to find the most profitable combination of stocks to invest in, ensuring the total cost does not exceed our budget, and the overall expected return is maximized. Here are our steps using dynamic programming approach. In the first step, we define the problem variables. We are working with three main variables in our case. N is our total budget for investing. Array P is the array presenting the prices of different stocks. And array R is the array representing the expected return for corresponding stocks in the next three months. In our step two, we define the state variables. In dynamic programming, we typically define the subproblems in the form of a table or a grid. Here we use a 2D array, DP, with size n plus 1 times n plus 1, where the lowercase n is the number of stocks. DPIJ represents the maximum expected return for a budget of J considering the first I stocks. And we define the base case in our next step. The base cases initialize the first row and first column of the DP table. DP0J for all J is zero, as there are no stocks to choose from. And DPI0 for all I is also zero, as there is no budget to invest. In the fourth step, we define the state transition. We populate the DP table in this step, calculating the value at each cell, DPIJ, by comparing two cases. If we are able to afford the ICE stock, we will take the max of not including the ICE stock and including it. If we can't afford the ICE stock, then our best option is not to include the ICE stock. In our last step, we compute the answer. After filling out the DP table, DP lowercase n and capital case n will give us the maximum expected return for a budget of n considering all stocks. Then to find the most cost efficient amount, we iterate from zero to n and find the smallest j such that DP and j is equal to dp and n. My teammate Jen Yu is going to present a detailed demo to help you better understand how our program works. Okay, thank you, Chao Yi. Um, now let's do a little bit of a project demo. So in our first function here, uh, we're reading from a uh, CSV file which we generated using a different code. Uh, the data is taken from um, Yahoo Finance. So just to give you a quick look of, of what that data looks like. All right, so the main values that we're interested in is the three months uh, return and the three months close, which represents the weight or the cost of our stocks. Right, so we are going to clean up this data uh, into our Python program so that we can use it. All right, so in our first function here, uh, we read the CSV. We're stripping the percentage sign from the uh, three months value. And then uh, we're excluding any values that is negative because obviously uh, we don't want those, all right? And then for our stock costs, the weight, uh, we're rounding it to two decimal places and then multiply it by 100 so that our weight values are always in integers. This is because we will be using a DP table. And for uh, and we know that our index numbers cannot be non-integers. All right, so we take those values and we convert it into a data list 
uh, a list of tuples with name, value, and weight for uh, each stock. All right. Next up, let's go to our knapsack function where we take the data list from the previous function and the max weight, which we will specify um, in our main function. All right. Um, we're going to initialize a DP table with all zero values. And then we're going to use our Bellman equation uh, that we previously discussed to uh, finish our uh, code. All right, so if the current item's weight, all right, so uh, again, back to Bellman, equa uh, Bellman equation, right? So if our current item's weight excludes, I mean, uh, exceeds the maximum weight that is allowed, we're obviously going to exclude the current item and the uh, value at that cell of the DP table is just going to be the value excluding the current item, All right? In the other case, if our current item can indeed fit into the knapsack with the weight that is less than the maximum value, then we consider two cases. Um, so we're going to pick the maximum of the value if we exclude the current item or the value we have by including the current item and using it again. All right, so the two cases of the Bellman uh, equation will take the maximum. All right, so we do that continuously for all the cells in the DP table until we've gone through it all and we fill it all up. And then we do a little bit of backtracking to, to find out which items that we, uh, we actually selected. So we're going to put those data into a uh, dictionary. All right. Um, so we're going to check. We're going to start with the bottom right of our BC DP table, which represents the maximum value with all the items and the maximum total weight. So we're going to work our way backwards we always check whether the maximum value at the current cell is different from the maximum uh, value obtained by excluding the current item. And if they're different, it means that the current item was indeed included in the knapsack. Uh, and therefore, uh, we add that item into the selected items dictionary. Then we update the available remaining weight and we keep iterating through the DP table in this process. And uh, until we have all of our selected items, right? Uh, in our main function, we are specifying our file path for the CSV file. We run the uh, read file function to get the data that we want. And then we specify a maximum weight uh, we're multiplying it by 100 here to, uh, again, uh, just to uh, align it with the weight, which we multiply by 100 to get to integers. Um, and then we have our result by running the knapsack function. And let's see what the result turns out to be. And here, as you can see, we have our stock names and one represents the quantity, which um, we're only having one unit of each stock in our knapsack. And these ones are uh, indeed the ones that, was the, uh, that, that have the best return values. Here's the last part of our presentation, conclusion and analysis. Our project investigated the application of dynamic programming in practical scenarios, attempting to solve the stock selection problem by maximizing the expected return of the portfolio. Utilizing actual stock data obtained from the Yahoo Finance API, we executed our algorithm through a Python script. Although our model possesses certain limitations, such as neglect of risk factors, our studies still demonstrate the potential of dynamic programming. 
in solving real world problems and inspire the application of theoretical knowledge to practice. We hope to continue this line of research into the future, incorporating more real world consideration into our model, thereby making our investment decision more accurate and scientific. The second last thing I want to say is Investing in stocks requires caution. And the last one is thank you. Thank you for your listening.